So we're gonna move on now and we're gonna look at the product rule for derivatives. Um, so here's where derivatives start getting, if you like, slightly more complicated than limits. Um, so far we've seen that like limits, um, the derivative of a sum is the sum of the derivatives. If there's a constant inside, you can bring it out. Um, we have the same behavior for limits. Uh, however, we know that if you have the limit of a product of two functions, you can simply take the product of the two limits. Um, that's not the case for derivatives. And we can see the rule here, right? So you'll notice that there are two terms, right? So if you take the derivative of a product of two functions, you get two terms. One term that involves the derivative of the first function and another term involving the derivative of the second, right? Um, another way you'll see this written is using this Leibniz notation, or, or even we could mix the two notations. Um, so the derivative of f of x times g of x is going to be f prime times g plus f times g prime, or if we want to use Leibniz notation all the way through, we have df dx times g of x plus f of x times dg dx. Okay? Um, you can use either either version of the product rule formula or some combination of the two. Um, so this means that we can now take care of derivatives like oh let's say let's say we want to do something like x squared times 1 plus x cubed. Well, the way we would have had to do this previously is we'd have to first do the multiplication. So we have to say, well, this is the derivative of x squared plus x to the fifth. And then we can use the sum rule to differentiate term by term using the power rule. And we get 2x plus 5x to the fourth. Um, now that we have the product rule available to us, we have another option. We could also say that the derivative of x squared times 1 plus x cubed is the derivative, oops, looks like we're losing green. Switch back to white. So the derivative of x squared times 1 plus x cubed plus x squared times the derivative of 1 plus x cubed. And now we use the fact that the derivative of x squared is 2x times 1 plus x cubed. And then x squared times the derivative of 1 plus x cubed, again using some rule, one's a constant, its derivative is zero, the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. Uh, so we get a very different looking answer, but if we simplify 2x times one, we get 2x plus, let's see, x times x cubed is x to the four, so we get 2x to the four, here we have a 3x squared times x squared, also x to the 4. And so we do indeed get the same answer as above. Now, for a problem like this, you could reasonably object that we had a lot less work to do by simply multiplying through and taking the derivative term by term than using the product rule. And that would be a fair objection. Uh, of course, if the product were a little bit more complicated, maybe you would rather not multiply things out. Maybe, maybe this you know, is a binomial as well, or maybe this one has three terms in it. There, there's going to be a point where it might be less work to use the product rule. Uh, and of course, there are going to be a lot of situations where multiplying things out like this is simply not possible. Right? What if this was, say, a trig function, like sine? What if it's a square root function? Right? Then we can't just multiply out and take the derivative term by term. Uh, we have to know how to deal with the derivative of a product. Okay, uh, the other thing to keep in mind here is, is notice that 
when you do the product rule, you do always get these two terms, right? This term involving the derivative of the first factor in the product, and a second term involving the derivative of the second factor in the product. Oops, missing a bracket there. Okay, it's not as simple as just saying that the derivative of a product is the product of the derivatives. Um, and it's a good thing that it's not because if that were the case, um, derivatives wouldn't be terribly interesting, right? So, so it's important to note that the derivative is not simply f prime of x times g prime of x, okay? That's not how we take derivatives. Uh, and indeed, if that were the case, if we looked at, say, f of x equals x squared, which, of course, you can write as x times x. Now, we know that derivative is supposed to be 2x, right? Power rule says that derivative is 2x. Um, if, if this were the rule, what would we get? Well, we would get simply the derivative of x times the derivative of x. We would get 1 times 1. Um, we would say that f prime is just 1. We know that's not right. The derivative is supposed to be 2x. In fact, uh, we could extend that to any power, right? Um, if, if this were the right product rule, you can quickly convince yourself that if this were the right product rule, then then the power rule would say that the derivative of any power function is just 1, which is clearly wrong. Okay, So this is definitely not the right rule. Uh, this is the right rule. And if we used it in this context, you can see that we do indeed recover the rule that we had before. Because if we do the derivative of x, that's 1, times the second factor, x, plus the first factor, times the derivative of the second. 1 times x plus x times 1 is x plus x. It's 2x, as we expect.